Cambodia is at a point right now where the United States was in probably 100 years ago. Just about 90% of the electricity consumed in Cambodia are in the cities, and yet 85% of the population are out in the rural areas. Just a decade ago, a less than a third of the people in Cambodia had access to electricity. That's changing very quickly. The demand is increasing 20% a year, which is phenomenal. Here, it legitimately changes your life. You go from a place that had no electricity to a place that does, and all the things electricity provides. Or you go from a place that used to you know, run off of expensive, dirty fuels that is you know, not sustainable uh, to, again, a clean, renewable source. This is what we call the poorest community in Siem Reap and education is the key to avoid the poverty in the future. Education can change their life. Education can keep the family uh, good in the future and keep the country peace. Twin Day Solar is a nonprofit organization dedicated to bringing renewable energy systems to the most remote uh, communities around the world. It was uh, founded by two renewable energy engineers, John Greiser and uh, Brandon Little. So Twin Day Solar saw an opportunity in Cambodia to bring solar to the Stephen Majijan Middle School. It is a brand new middle school serving roughly 12 villages outside of Siem Reap. It's the only middle school and um, they're currently uh, limited to the capacity of an, an expensive and pollutant uh, diesel generator. Solar, for me, it's the original energy. It's the most abundant form of energy. Uh, it's the most sustainable and renewable, and it's it's everywhere. It's access. Uh, you can have access to solar everywhere in the world. We want to come into these communities and inspire the next wave, the next generation of, of solar um, enthusiasts and solar, solar installers. So there's you know a thousand students, middle school students, who are taking math and science classes. Perhaps they'll be inspired in, in some way, just like many of us were, and that they can continue this work long after we leave. I think right now, solar is one of the most scalable renewable energy solutions you can take anywhere. You can build it on a residential scale, you can build it on a commercial scale, you can make it as big as utility scale, which is what I've been used to. And the beauty of it is it can adapt to every market that it's entering. You can make a utility scale solution where it's big enough and low cost enough that a utility anywhere can hopefully make it compete at a point of grid parity. But you can also scale it down to the system of what a house would need. And maybe that's what you actually need. You need a system that's purely set for residential setting where you don't have transmission, like a project right here. Twin Day Solar doesn't just uh, come and install the, the system, but we also want to make sure that people are properly trained on how to operate and maintain the system. So we work with the staff or other local technicians so that they are aware of the, the size and scale of the system and can properly fix it should any maintenance problems arise. But more importantly, we want to work with the students so that they understand uh, what is on their school and what that means to their education, but also ignite um, some curiosity on STEM career paths and technology. The building of the school itself was very exciting for the local community. Um, as I said before, this is the only middle school that serves um, roughly 12 villages um, outside of Siem Reap. When the community learned that we were planning to bring solar, um, it was just one more, it just upped their excitement um, about the school and the opportunities that this school is providing for their children. So really everyone in the community um, is not only excited, but willing to lend a hand. Um, you know, school hasn't even started yet, but kids arrive every morning uh, waiting to see what we'll be working on and, and willing to help us move some equipment from one side of the courtyard to the other. We have people coming and, and painting and 
digging trenches and just helping us. So it's solar is very important uh, in this uh, community. Since the electricity from the government is very limited and expensive, and most people cannot afford to tie in uh, from the government to here. For our project in Cambodia this year, uh, we have 15 volunteers that are truly volunteering their time, taking either unpaid or vacation time to be in Cambodia and help electrify this middle school, um, which really illustrates the dedication not only to the renewable energy movement, but to help electrify um, off-grid communities such as, such as this middle school. They're working long days uh, out in the hot sun to make sure that the system gets done in time for the start of the school year. Everyone's excited to be involved with this project uh, from start to finish and see how they can lend their background and experience to benefit the communities surrounding Siem Reap. We have um, volunteers ranging from uh, PV engineers to install project managers, policy, uh, renewable energy policy makers, um, to utility scale designers. Um, it's a, a real mix of different expertise and talents. Yeah, so uh, kind of an ironic thing. Um, obviously, we're, we're more than powering the school here. Uh, we're planning for their future needs in terms of fans, air conditioning, computer labs, all that stuff. We actually have um, roughly double the amount of solar power available that they have on the generator, um, which is great. But one of the things that has been a problem at some of the other schools is that uh, the only power in the community is at the school where the generator exists. And so there's outlets in all the classrooms to power the equipment, and everybody from the community ends up like wandering in and plugging in their cell phone charger and interrupting the class in the school. And so this little small um, side project we're kind of working on over here is, a, is an effort to create a, a local communal space where people can congregate, but also be able to charge their tablets, phones, all that kind of stuff without having to disturb the school. It's not connected to the rest of the system. It's separate. I think it'll be able to fully charge about 26 cell phones in one solar charge cycle. My involvement in this project included the installation and build of the inverter, charge controllers, the batteries uh, for this particular system. Uh, we were able to get those from Outback. Uh, we used the GS Load Center as well as we used Rolls batteries to develop a 48 volt battery as well as included the, ch the charge controllers from Outback as well. And the intent of this room is to take the, the solar and then convert it to an AC power source that's capable of being used by the school for their various educational purposes. With solar, there's a simplicity to it that makes it so valuable in, in environments like this where they're so remote, they don't have the opportunity to be uh, looked, up, looked over every day. They, they set it, forget it, and it provides exactly what they need. Uh, this is uh, the place that uh, we never believe that have a huge school and never believe that we have a solar energy with 26 kilowatt. We never believe we have a, a soccer field, basketball, and we never believe that the whole, the entire campus chain like today. Right now, we are a new hope of the children here. Over 900 children will be attending the school in the coming years. You know, it's, it's too much to ask for the governments of these countries to invest the billions and trillions of dollars in all the infrastructure and cent centralized uh, generating plants and things like that. And it's not the best way to do it, you know? Solar and distributed energy is going to basically leapfrog an entire antiquated set of, of power, just like in these countries cell phones have. They completely leapfrog the landline um, communications and now everyone has a cell phone and I see that same thing happening with solar and I see it happening within our generation. Um, I think by the end of my years on this earth I think everyone will have access to electricity if they choose to and it'll be from solar. Right now I, 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 my dream is come true that I can help a lot of children in this community and I hope the children will change their life more than I do and I believe that 900 children right here 
at least 200, 300 children can become a great leader of the world.